Hello and welcome to this video. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about selectors. What are selectors? Why are they useful? And what are some best practices for using selectors? So let's dive in with what selectors are. So a selector is related to uh, automating in Power, Auto Power Automate Desktop. It's related to uh, automating user interfaces. Now that user interface could be a web page or it could be a Windows application itself. And the way that we automate them is we interact with user interface elements, things called user interface elements. And the selector is a component of the UI element. It is how we are able to select the user interface element that we want our, our automation to automate, to interact with. Either a button press or populate in a text field. We need to identify the element and we do that through selectors. Now, say this is the text box that we want to input data into. Now, the way that the way that a web page tends to be co is, is constructed is that this will be it contained within various different containers. Now, for easy uh, explain, exp explainer purposes, I'm just going to call it an inner frame. So there might be an inner frame on the web page that houses that text box. That inner frame might be housed by an outer frame. And that outer frame is, of course, within a page. So to get to that text box, its path, if you will, will be page, outer frame, inner frame, and then the text box itself. So to select it, the, 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 the selector would, be, would contain that path. Now each of these uh, containers, uh, also known as uh, 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 dividers in, in, in web development, uh, has, have certain properties, ID, class, and different things, name, lots of different properties that they have. And each of these um, uh, div uh, dividers will have properties. So let's say that these, that each of these dividers here have um, an ID property, which is shown on screen. Then the path to that, to that particular user element interface that we want, that, that UI element that we want to automate is shown on screen there, ID main page, ID outer frame, ID inner frame, ID search box. So if we, if th that is our selector to get to that search box. What I found and what's made a big difference for me over the past few months is that so long as the, 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 um, so long as the element is unique has a unique property across the page or across the application, there is no need to use the full path. You can just use the, I, the, the property of the uh, element that you want to interact with that is unique across the whole page or whole, whole application. This is really useful. This means that if this web page suddenly decided to move, the developer of this web page decided to move this text box and put it inside another frame or move it to a different frame, so long as the ID didn't change of that text box, our automation would still find it because we're only looking for uh, a, a text box that has an ID of whatever the ID is of that text box. This is super useful. It also uh, applies to Windows or in, in, in when you're automating things that aren't web pages. So applications themselves, for example, here we're looking for this selector is looking for a window name that's called note, notes.txt uh, and a process is notepad. And they, these are just selectors. Here's a selector builder that you may be familiar with inside Power Automate Desktop. You can also use different operators. There's not just equals available to you. So you could have contains, contains the word notes or something like that. You could use contains, regular expression, all of that stuff. So to select the elements or the windows, you can, you, you're not just restricted to equal to. You can also have multiple selectors, which means that you can, uh, if, if the automation can't find this selector, you can add a new selector and then it will look for that one in order. So look for this one first, then this one, then this one. Uh, so you've got multiple selectors supported for each UI element. Let me show you what I mean. So here, uh, let's bring up this automation. So this automation just does two things. I'm going to run it now quickly. So all this does is launch Edge and launches a, 
a, a developer a development application here just this pretend application um i'm going to minimize that we'll come back to that in a second uh, for automating web pages is a super useful tool um, built into chrome web and firefox in Cr uh, chrome edge and firefox in chrome and edge it is just right mouse click and inspect i believe it's the same on firefox so you can right mouse click and inspect and what do you get if you do that so you get this page here now if i look at so i i highlighted the the, the element that i want to interact with 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 my bot i clicked on inspect and it gives you this um it gives you the properties of that particular text box that we can examine so we can say this this has a class of content search input it has a name of search parameters dot search text it has id of search text what i found is that class name or id or a combination of of those are really good at being able to identify web elements that we want to interact with if we were to look at this one that will probably have very similar things main search button um, you can see the, the the name these are very likely to be unique across the whole of this web page so i find that what this allows us to do it allows us to look at the different properties of the element we want to interact with to make sure that when we go to power automate desktop that it's picking up something that we can see is likely to be unique i click on uh, i'm just going to go into uh let's fill in Let's go browser automation, web form filling, and we're going to populate a text field. And what it's going to do is ask us to add, I'm going to add a, a UI element here. I'm going to put some text in here so it isn't an error. And if I go and add UI element, so this is where you get this dialog that pops up here. And let's bring up our web page. I'm just going to close this here. So you can see as I'm, as I'm moving around over the web page, it's highlighting the different elements that are there. So here's the, the divider, uh, and it's this that we want to automate. I'm going to hold, hold down Control and click on left mouse click to capture that UI element, and then I'm going to click on Save here. Now I want to go to UI Elements over here, and let's look at the element that we've captured. Now one thing that I would do as best practice, I'm not going to do it here, but one, if I was building a real uh, a, a real example I would rename uh, and give this a meaningful name that's, that makes more sense to me although it's captured something pretty good there which is useful let's have a look at the selectors click on edit these are the selectors now since an update about a month ago maybe two months ago um, in particular the the web selector has got very very good at being able to choose a unique selector all on its own without needing to uh, without needing to edit it so here you can see it's an input with an ID of search text, which we know, having inspected it, that this is very likely to be unique and it is the right thing that we want to be automating. Let's have a look at the actual selector builder here. So we'll look at selector builder. Now what used to happen is it would, by default, choose a lot of different properties. You might do something like this before, and you'd have a lot of, a lot of things here that were selecting it out and, and it would make it not as robust as it could be. What is really good about having just the one thing here uh, that is being highlighted as the selector is again, if this box moves, then our automate our robot um, automation will pick this up um, uh, because it's looking for just an input uh, for an input text box that has the ID of search text. I'm gonna click close on that, uh, and then I'll just show you. Uh, so I'll just run that, and you can see it working. So let's close this here run and you can see it puts the puts the stuff in uh, puts the the information in there um for a um a windows application very similar process uh, let's just go and uh, populate a text field again it's going to ask me for a ui element click on add ui element and again it can go around here what we don't have uh, is um the ability to uh, uh you can't inspect these uh, now there may be a way technically to do this if there is please leave it in the comments and let me know that would be awesome um, but let's say i wanted to capture a particular web a particular element here control and left again and here it captures the ui element 
I'm going to go to your element over here and here's the text box that I want to use. And again, the same concept is here. And it's, but this time it's captured a lot of different things. Now, what I would do in this instance is I would look at what it's captured. Now it's cla the class text box and the ID text account 103. I'm pretty sure that's going to be unique across the whole application. So I'm going to unselect all of these in the confidence that these, these items here will make it unique and the bot won't get stuck. Uh, and then click update and that's what I would use there as the elements. For me, the golden rule is the fewer uh, elements, uh, sorry, the fewer uh, uh, selectors that you have, the more robust that uh, your, um, uh, your, your user interface automation, your power automate desktop automation is going to be. So fewer selectors, use inspect uh, on web pages, um, and yeah, good luck automating. Uh, do join us on Discord uh, if you would like some support. And my name is Tony Brooks, and thank you for watching, and catch you around.